Israel's war in Lebanon is getting more complicated. Hezbollah is intensifying its attacks and firing more rockets towards Israel. Today, Haifa was targeted once again. Hezbollah launched a major strike. It fired more than 100 rockets at Haifa nearby areas. It lasted for about 30 minutes, meaning Hezbollah fired over 100 rockets in half an hour. And this is quite significant. Haifa is Israel's third largest city. It is also a port city. It is critical to Israel's military establishment. It is home to military bases and key weapons manufacturing facilities. Yesterday, Haifa was struck for the first time in nearly 20 years. Hezbollah considers it a high-value target, so it is doubling down. In today's strike, at least seven locals were injured. Hezbollah has also issued a fresh threat. This big consensus by the Israeli enemy, along with the U.S. and Western countries, they are all trying to pressure us in order to be fearful and to be afraid. But we will not be afraid. We will not be fearful. I would like to reassure you. Our capabilities are fine, and what the enemy said about our capabilities being affected is a delusion. That was Sheikh Naim Qasim, the deputy chief of Hezbollah. He said that despite the recent attacks, their military capabilities are intact. So how is Israel responding to all of this? It is expanding the battlefield in Lebanon. The IDF or the Israeli Defense Force is deploying more troops, targeting more villages in Lebanon. Today, more soldiers were sent to the Lebanon front. The 146 Reserve Division of the Israeli Defense Force it has joined the fight in Lebanon. So Israel now has as many as four divisions deployed there on the border with Lebanon. Four divisions. How many soldiers is that? Israel has not officially released a number, but most estimates say it's more than 15,000 troops. 15,000 Israeli soldiers clashing with Hezbollah in Lebanon. And they're getting aerial support. The IDF is carrying out multiple airstrikes. Israel says it is making progress. It claims to have taken over a Hezbollah base in southern Lebanon. Israel says that this was used by Hezbollah as a combat compound. But these gains are coming at a heavy cost. The casualty count is mounting. At least 11 Israeli soldiers have died during this operation. But there's nothing to suggest that Benjamin Netanyahu will slow down. On the contrary, he's ramping it up. He's intensifying the idea of operations in Gaza as well. There were fresh airstrikes today. At least 25 Palestinians were killed. And just like Hezbollah, Hamas is firing back. An Israeli soldier was killed in northwest Gaza today. The Qasim brigades claimed responsibility for this one. This is the armed wing of Hamas, the Qasim brigades. Israel is yet to respond to this claim. Meanwhile, the warnings from Iran are also getting louder. The Islamic Republic of Iran does not want to increase tension in war. Although we are not afraid of war, we are fully prepared, if they want to test our will, as I said, they can. We are ready for any scenario, any situation. Our armed forces are fully and 100% ready, and they have identified all the necessary targets. That was the Iranian foreign minister. He says Tehran is fully prepared for war. Remember, Israel has been talking about an attack, a retaliation for last week's missile strikes from Iran. But it's not clear when Netanyahu will strike and where he will strike. The Israeli defense minister is traveling to Washington to hold talks with the U.S. leadership, possibly to discuss Israel's retaliatory options. And apparently the U.S. is advising them to avoid attacks on Iran's nuclear or energy sites. Instead, they're pushing Israel to strike the Iranian military. It appears Israel has not yet narrowed down on a plan, and frankly, there are no good options here. Whichever path Israel chooses, Iran is bound to retaliate. What remains to be seen is how far each side is prepared to go. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House.
Everything you need to know about how America votes and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained. Every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.